Hey, it's Joel, and recently on the show, we featured a filament extruder, something that I had high hopes of being able to recycle failed prints and support material. The episode did fairly well, it has a lot of views, but the results from that extruder were less than satisfying. 3Devo reached out and said, Joel, I think we have the solution for you. Our filament extruder works better than that, and we'd love for you to show your audience. Not one to turn down an offer like that, we got it in. We got it out of the box and now I'm really excited because I think we might finally have a solution for turning failed prints, support material and raw resin into custom filament that we can then print out. And that's what we're gonna do, hopefully, right here on 3D Printing Nerd. There you are, welcome back. We're gonna get this set up, but first let's talk a little bit about this machine because it's, it's a little more everything than the previous machine. It's bigger, it's badder, it's bester. I don't know, we'll find out. Just like the other machine, there is a hopper up top and this helps funnel resin, PLA resin, ABS resin, different pellets, uh, ground up prints, stuff like that. The machine then takes that and gets it down into the giant screw that powers all of this material forward. There are four different heat chambers that the screw takes the material through. And that's important because the heat profile for PLA material is way, way different than the heat profile for PEAK or PEI or carbon fiber nylon, take your pick. From there, right up front, oof, oh, my poor desk. Right up front, right here, there is a nozzle and it starts spitting that filament out, well, right here. These blower fans cool it off and as it comes through here, what's really great, this is a sensor. And so this machine will sense whether it's 1.75 or 285, three millimeter filament. And once it starts to get a little bit out of spec, either higher or lower than the desired diameter, it will adjust the extrusion rate to match. So that way it stays within a spec. I think it's, you can do it within 0.05 above or beyond. Right here is the puller. This is where it's pulling it. It goes through this, which is a winder. So this then transfers the filament to, oh, it's heavy, to this right here. This is a motorized spooler and they actually give you a spool to put it on. That's kind of cool. It'll spool up the filament that you're making. And so once you have it in a spot of being able to have the correct settings for the right material, you just let it go and it makes filament. And that's our goal. So uh, I'm gonna read the instructions, I'm gonna activate it, and then we're gonna make some filament. Here's the empty spool. It's really interesting what they do when they wanna spool something. So there's this little, uh, there's a holder. You put it in. And then you tighten this down. This tightens around the spool, keeps it centered. That's fun. There we go. So the spool is now tight against this. And then what you can do is insert it right here. There's magnets in the back and these little registration marks that hold it into place. And that's it. Now it's magneted in and when it turns, it'll be able to, to hold the filament. According to this, we add the PLA granules and we start extracting. Extruding. Extracting? Extruding. Jeez. We start extruding. Have you had your coffee today? Unfortunately. There's desiccant in them with the resin. Makes sense. Uh, as far as how much to load, uh, I'll just... Okay. This was 1,200 grams of filament, and uh, I loaded in roughly half. So now what I need to do is go here and, and click this and then start extrusion. I've set a 1.75 millimeter PLA default. It's gonna spit film out here. And once it gets to the point where I can pull it through the tensioner, uh, I have to stick it through this part here and then get it wound around this. So uh, fingers crossed. This is already better than the previous one that I've tested. So I'm really excited about that. Starting extrusion automatically. Oh, homing position. It has temperatures right up here that shows the different zones and what they're supposed to be set at. So now once these get to the right temperature, we're gonna start making some filament. Eventually. So it looks like we have the, the PLA up here and there's a screw turning. So I, uh, there was a couple beep beeps. Once things got to within a temperature range that was acceptable, uh, it sounds like the screw is turning, which means that eventually, we should get some happiness out the nozzle right there. You can see that the puller is turning and I can do that to disengage it. See how it disengages? So that little metal hook traps the filament so it can pull it nicely between those uh, the pullers. Oh, whoa, look at that. 
I gotta get something to pull that out. Is it supposed to be that thick? Uh, it'll adjust. <laughs> Look at that. It's it's making filament. Uh, uh, okay, now we have a problem because it's just gonna spit it out right here and I have to fit it through that hole and then, uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, so uh, eventually, so what it does is it tells you the diameter of the filament and then once you say okay, so I think what I have to do is feed it through one of these, uh, uh, okay, one of these, one of these holes. Come on, okay, right through there and then, okay, it should take it, right? Right? It should. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, start spooling. Okay. So we've got 1 1.7, 1.72, 1.76, 1.78, 1.77, 1.78, 1.76. Okay, good. So we're within a, a, a 0 0.05 tolerance on either side, it looks like. That was painless. That was, that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. So there's this door here. This will magnet close. Okay, now it's just gonna make filament. It's kind of interesting. So when it starts, the, um, the filament, you do need to give it a consistent pull or else it will blob up. And if you pull it too fast, it gets a little thin. And then you slow it down, it gets a little like there. So the, it looks like the, the, the thing that needs to happen straight away is once the filament is ready, you pull it through, get it into the puller because that's going to be a consistent pull on the filament and then in that sensor, it's gonna sense to the, the diameter to make sure that it's actually coming down. While this is making filament, why don't we load up a model into Idea Maker? We'll slice it up and get it ready for the Artillery 3D Sidewinder, at which point we'll print it out and we'll see how it looks. Here we are, we've got Idea Maker opened and I've got a profile for my Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1. And here's what I wanna do. I wanna print out a Benchy, why not, right? So let's import the Benchy. My profile though is interesting because my Sidewinder has a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on it, just like the profile says. Let's go into edit and then advanced. So we've got 0.2 millimeter layers, which is perfect with 0.3 being the first layer. The extruder spits out a 0.6 millimeter width. I know that I can define that width a little bit more and actually Stefan from CNC Kitchen did a an episode on his channel on that very recently. I highly suggest you go and watch that. Infill, we're setting to 10% and it's just gonna be cubic because I like cubic. No support, no support on this. The platform edition is gonna be a skirt only with, uh, let's see, I'm gonna increase it to three loops because uh, why not? I'm going to increase the distance out to eight millimeters. So that means that the skirt itself is going to be three loops around the model and it's going to be eight millimeters away from the model. Cooling, uh, enable cooling. These settings are pretty good all on their own. Zero, zero fan on the first layer, 100% fan on the second layer. Temperature, build plate at 65. Primary extruder, we could take that down a bit. We could probably go to 210. This is a Volcano compatible hot end, so the melt zone is longer and uh, the, the extrusion width is larger, which means we're gonna have to give it a little bit more heat. And so while 205-ish would probably work, I'm gonna set 210 because that's fine. Speed, default speed in Idea Maker is 50 millimeters per second. I think that's a fine speed. I'm just gonna set it right there. Uh, I don't need any of these other settings, so I'm gonna hit okay. Save and close and then slice. And there it is. You can see right there, let's see. Whoa, there. Our, our, uh, there's our skirt. Those are the three loops right there. Uh, the benchy itself, this representation looks like it should. Because I'm using a bigger nozzle, you can see that the little flag holder in the back doesn't look as good. Um, I know if I was running a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, then it would look better. One of the ways that we can actually take care of that though is scale. So a Benchy is a, a benchmark model, but because we're running a larger nozzle than what it's usually printed with, we can scale it up just a little bit. So why don't we go to scale and make sure uniform scaling is checked and size everything up 150%. It is a slightly larger Benchy. Let's slice it. Let's keep those same parameters and take a look. Ah, it's gonna take a little bit longer to print, which is fine. And there we go. That's much, much better. So this is more appropriate. And you can kind of see the 3D Benchy right here. 
So it says this is going to take 34 grams or 11.7 meters of filament. And so once the filament maker is done making the filament or at least enough for that, what I can do is uh, get that printing and uh, it won't take too long. So it's kind of exciting. Let's save it off and let's print this Benji. Look at this, look at this Benchy. So a caveat, right? Uh, we have to see if the filament's any good and we're using an auto printer that isn't precisely dialed in. But look at it, it's fantastic. This Benchy looks amazing. Sure, it was scaled up, that's fine. But we were using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, so that's okay. It's not like we were cheating in any way. And really the goal here, we're, we're trying to ascertain whether or not the 3DVO composer is creating consistent filament. Like if we saw a bunch of layer inconsistencies, then obviously there's a good chance that the filament itself would be out of spec. But I believe it's within that 0.05 millimeters plus or minus. And it's gorgeous. Just look at it. Just look at it. This is, it's smooth. It's wonderful. One thing to consider about this, this is a natural virgin PLA. There's no additives in it. And so it is possible that the base resin itself is just ultra wonderful. And anytime we introduce an additive to it, we're gonna have to fine tune something. That's fine. But this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the 3DVO automatically and easily creates filament that's usable. <laughs> Not just usable, but wonderful and awesome. And I can't wait. I can't wait to print more things from filament that I've made using that machine. Some people are going to say, well, Joel, it's expensive. It's really expensive. And I get you. I hear you on that because I agree with you. This is not a garage tinkerer's solution. This isn't something that you're going to go pick up at your local micro center. This is a very specific product aimed at a very specific market segment. So these are designers, industrial people, um, boutique filament makers, maker spaces, and uh, industrial design firms, and schools, and educational facilities, and STEAM classes. This is a tool that provides those who want to be artistic with this medium to be artistic. And other than actually going to Protopasta's workshop and creating your own filament there, this is probably the next best step. Uh, so it's cool that I get to show this off. And what's great about this, what's really great about this is that now that this is available, the technology is going to trickle down into more maker and garage tinkerer friendly packages. We're going to see filament extrusion with this automated level of awesome probably sooner rather than later for the general population that has uh, tools in the garage and doesn't have the money to afford one of these. I am excited for the future because I think this is part of it. And it also means that uh, maybe, we'll give, uh, maybe we'll give Bacon 2.0 a try, maybe, or something else. You know, I have this custom filament maker now that does a really good job, so I'd like to hear from you in the comments what type of filament should I make? And maybe I'll use your comment and maybe I'll make your special filament. You never know. But this Benchy proves that we're going to have a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. And if you made it this far, you are definitely awesome. And where's the machine? Oh, it's right over there. I'm going to put it to use. I'm going to make some filament and we're going to print some awesome things. Don't forget to tell each other more. I love you all. As always, high five. Hey, Fivers. Hola, senores and senoritas. Wow, look at you. You went all... <laughs> Brazilian? No. Portuguese?